first of all, people who come to church, they don't come to pay tax. So you cannot tax those who have just come freely <coughs> to offer. These are just offertory. That's why that's where the name comes from, offertory. Now, do you tax offertory unless you have problem with your salary? Because if I come and then I find somebody is vulnerable and I offer something, then again you come and say, yes, you have offered money to this vulnerable person or to this institution to provide this particular service. We want to tax you. It is the contrary. In countries like elsewhere outside Uganda, you'll find that there are people who do charity work as philanthropists. Instead, they are exempted from taxation because they are supporting other groups of people. So it would be very unfair if I told this policy is also to use as a means of coercing religious institutions for taxation. It would be very unfair. But uh, it would also be very good for us to be accountable. As a religious institution, we must be accountable for everything we get. Because we are getting from people, why don't we account back to the people? Because they are the ones who are offering to us, and they also want to know what we are doing with that little offer tree they are giving us. To me, I do appreciate that principle, but then I would differ when it comes into as a means of uh, taxation. I, I differ. We should love taxes. If we don't love taxation, then we should also hate donation. Because these donations that you come are people's tax. You get it? The donations you keep getting are people's tax. Denmark, Sweden, their tax is 52%, is it 52 or 62? Percent of their income. They pay more than a half of their income in form of tax to government. And the government plans includes donation to Ugandans who are lazy and they are not uh, digging. In digesting this um, draft policy, uh, if part of it is going to be for the faith organization to be paying tax to the government, I would say directly that is not scriptural. Um, the Bible doesn't allow church or the faith organization to pay tax. Accountability is, accountability is not uh, money only. Actually, the religious policy here is talking about many issues to solve problems in the church. And if I ask you, what is the problem of the churches? What are the problems? The problem is of accountability, not of money. When Kibwetere took people and killed people, you were not yet born in the year 2000. Was it 2098? People died in Kanungu there. Over 200 people. Actually, it is just guesswork because nobody knew the number of the people. They died. They were burnt. That is what government is said. You must be accountable as a leader. Can he account for those lives? You get it? Can he? That is what we are saying. The policy must design ways of accountability with church organization to be accountable. The policy of Uganda emphasizes accountability of public servants. And when we talk about accountability, me, an account, I'm an accounting officer. When people talk to me, of accountability, people think it is just the money. The money is a very little part of the accountability I'm supposed to give. First of all, I'm, I, I should account for the staff. Why are the staff lazy? Why are they coming late? You get it? Oh, if they are very smart, why are your staff very smart? Like mine, you can see they are always very smart. Why? Giving that is accountability. When we come out like this, have they gone there? Did they really produce good result? That they are going to ask me when I'm writing my performance report. How, how have your uh, staff performed? That is accountability. You get it? So the word accountability is not money only. 
the moment you reduce accountability to money only, you have lost it. We are not urging only the church. We are talking about families. Right now, I've just been talking to eight teachers. I'm asking them to be accountable for the poor performance of the students. You get it? Can they account for the failure of the students? When the students fail their exam, a teacher in the classroom, can you account why the, 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 your students have failed that subject? That is what we call accountability. We need people at the grassroots to understand this policy. Then from bottom, top approach. We need people to really internalize this policy. Sometimes policies are very clear, but the clauses that come in between, that is what people fear. You may find a headline of the policy saying A, B, C, D, but now what follows, the clauses that follow. That is where we are, we are, that is our fear as religious leaders. These clauses are not brought forward so that we really internalize. Because we, we know the policy may say this, but now what are those clauses in between? Uh, that is where our fear is. Will the government not, will they not begin to, to tax the churches? Now if they are saying uh, we should register as, as churches, we should register our churches, are they, are they not going to, to tax those churches that we are going to register? Because now we are going to be, for, for the government now, they want us to be operating now like NGOs. But now our fear is, what about, what about the registration? Is it going to be free? Is the registration going to be done freely? And then what may come after the registration? That is where the fear of the religious leaders. We don't know what is going to come out after this policy when it is now enacted in the law. Instead of paying tax to the government in many uh, countries, instead uh, the government support the body of Christ. They pay uh, pastors or religious leaders as social workers. They are in the payroll and that gives them uh, a good hand to have full time in ministry serving the community. I also uh, urge you it this way that uh, the mode of taxing uh, in Uganda here, uh, tax is levied on almost every day thing that you go and buy in the market. Even a pastor is being taxed, every believer is being taxed. When you buy a bottle of water to drink, you are already taxed. So in that way, there is no need at all for the government to think of taxing the religious body, which is, uh, you know, suffering from uh, lack of fun. Many of the organizations are depending on overseas donation, which come with a lot of uh, strings attached. And it is about time that I speak strongly to the government that uh, in order to avoid all those strings attached like LGBT from um, overseas, it is about time that the government starts supporting the faith-based organizations and support them financially in order to, you know, make the church stand strong with uh, independent decision making without any string attached. When you come to the church, you know people talk about offertory, offertory. Offertory is just a gift that you give to the church to do work, not so. But that work is for the parishioners. You give so that the church does its work. Accountability for those resources is that you will say, this year we focus to finish this building the money we collected is this amount, we have spent it, this, 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 we have even borrowed, we have a debt here to pay. That is accountability. I have been a parishioner in All Saints for the last 30 years. All Saints Cathedral, Kampala. You get it? I have been in the Church of Uganda eh? as a senior uh, parishioner and uh, a senior lay reader, lay leader for almost over 40 years. Do you see the church house? 
Janan Loom Church House on Plot 34 Kapala Road. I know you don't know the port number because, <laughs> but I know it. <laughs> you get it? Yes. We started collecting money for that house in the 70s. In the 80s, we have been collecting money. But with inflation, this money would come. When the currency were changed, two zeros were crossed, 30 percent removed from the money. The money was in the bank. So it comes to something. Less. People begin shouting, you see, they have eaten the money. You get it? Now, such a cry, it was only until, you know, we designed method of giving to all, all the Christians in the, the Church of Uganda accountability on the issue of church house. Then when we reach a point and we say, now we must build this house. When Archbishop Koyoye was uh, on the chair, he said, we cannot sit like this and keep collecting the money. Let us go and break the soil and start with whatever we have in the hand. You get it? So we would call the people, then come and they will say, you, you pick. Some people said, I will build this pillar. Give me the bill of quantity. You get it? When we did like that, that is part of accountability. You get it? Here in Gulu, we expanded our parish church in Christ Church. I was the chairperson of the lady in, in the parish church, of the council. When we were expanding the same, we said, what we need the money for is for windows and the like, and, pe and people offer that, I will make the window. You go to the windows now there, you will find the name of people who made the window, who donated the window. Their name is there, donated by so and so. Fix on the metal. Most of them have long died, but that is accountability. You get it? So accountability is, don't uh, trivialize things. The word accountability is so big, it covers all our lives. Not only offertory. And the church touches all our life. The churches have os uh, hospitals. Not so. When you go to those hospitals, you are sick and the like, you want to be treated properly. If there is a problem there, and the churches from the, 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 the hospitals under the church. We are saying, let them be accountable. Let their hospitals not be like that of government where, you know, and that is why the public keeps shouting on government, be accountable, let, let them be accountable for our drugs. And for government to make their all medical, medical equipment, government of Uganda, not for sale. You get it? By the way, when that is written like that, it has come from a plan. That plan must have been in the health policy. How do we protect losses of medical drugs, of drugs? Then one of the point of action is, let us write on all the drugs, government of Uganda, government of Uganda, not for sale, government of Uganda, not for sale. That is providing accountability. You get it? That is what accountability is. So the word accountability is a big subject. You cannot even finish it if I sit with you for a whole hour. You can't. So when you say clarify, the only thing I want to tell you that the word accountability is not offertory in the church. It's one small thing. We want the church leaders to be accountable for their life. You see their leaders there, their behavior there. Here, I'm talking about loss of what? Ethical values. You see, I, I, I have everything. I'm talking about ethical values. Why am I giving this ethical value to the, to the church leaders? Eh? This is not for accounting for offertory. I want them to account for their own life first. You get it? Are you ethical? Are you honest? You get it? Are you qual enough, qualified enough to preach the word of God so that people can come to you 
or when you go to preach, people actually walk away. You get it? Are you achieving the objective for which you have set yourself? That as a church we shall do like this, we shall preach the gospel, let the gospel reach the people. We are not going to say, this is how you should preach. We are not saying, we are going to design the method of how you should account for it. No. But what we want is solve the problems, the various problems in the church or in the religious and faith organizations. And one major problem which is in all those is lack of accountability. Not only of money, but lack of accountability. Because people are not honest. Failure of, to observe ethical conduct. Failure to be ethical. That is why we have designed all this. When we design these ethical values, these ethical values is not only for any other person, it's for everybody. And one of them is the biggest institution. By the way, if you don't know, the church, the religious organization is the biggest institution. It touches everybody. There are some people who do not go to school, so the school does not touch them. They have no children to go there, so the school does not touch them. Even if he has the children, he doesn't send them. The matters in the school does not touch them, not so. But he will fall sick. He will go to hospital, not so. Eh? He himself, he has a God. Eh? If anything happens, even if a person does not come to church, by the way, if a, a lion comes, you, you will hear him shouting in the name of God. Oh God! Eh? That is the face. So anything that touches is what we're saying.